Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Vermont's agricultural landscape is always in a slow and steady process of change. Before cows, there were sheep dotting Vermont's hills and valleys, and now UVM Extension is leading research into the viability and profitability of goat dairies. Goats are one of the first domesticated animals in human history. They're prized for the milk, meat, and fiber. In order to get to a future where goats and goat farms are as popular as cattle dairies in the Green Mountains, it's going to take some academic acumen and some number crunching. Keith Silva took a tour of one of Vermont's biggest goat dairies, Ayers Brook Farm in Randolph, to get his goat story. It's milking time at Ayers Brook Goat Dairy in Randolph. Milking about 300 goats right now. It's a family farm. This farm is one of 20 goat dairies in Vermont, included in a study by the University of Vermont to find out about the viability, profitability, and sustainability of the goat dairy industry in the state. The research was commissioned by Vermont Creamery, Vermont's leading goat milk processor, with funding from the Northeast Dairy Business Innovation Center and conducted by UVM Extension and the UVM Center for Rural Studies. Kelsey Meehan, an Extension dairy specialist, is one of the researchers. It might sound cliche to say, but I think there's a mix of opportunities and challenges. Um, part of the research has been uh, interviews with 20 goat dairies across the state, so both um, dairies that are shipping to Vermont Creamery and, and farmstead creameries that are doing their own um, processing on farm. There is demand for fluid goat milk and for goat milk products, and then we're also hearing a lot of challenges, um, especially around milk price and profitability and, and working on ways to summarize that in the research and, and talk about best recommendations for, for the industry. The Vermont Agency of Agriculture, Food and Markets estimates that there are a total of 30 goat farms in Vermont, which means in order to gain momentum, there needs to be more research and more events like this tour of Ayersbrook Goat Dairy. We're gonna move them into that barn. Miles Hooper, one of the co-owners of the farm, speaks from experience when he talks about the importance of getting out and seeing how other farmers manage their operations. You can never go wrong by visiting as many farms as possible prior to making any kind of investment. We wish we had spent more time, particularly traveling in Europe, France and Netherlands, um, to gain uh, an understanding for how to efficiently set up a commercial dairy. The most meaningful experiences I've had um, in learning about goats and the industry and best practices um, have all come from visiting uh, other farms and particularly other farms in other countries. So two thirds of the herd is always milking. Hooper's travels in Europe speak to the lack of information and research regarding large scale goat dairies in the Northeast and the U.S. overall. Daryl Hooper seconds her husband's experience. There's a ton of information now about cows. You know, a lot of the information, if you go online about goats, is from a blog or from this, you know, Better Homes and Garden publication. Is there's not a lot of professional, there's not a lot of research right. out there. There's not a lot of commercial, yeah, there's not a lot of funding. So it's difficult in that way, you know, but uh, well, it's not discouraging. The research being done by UVM is the first step to create a baseline for the current state of goat dairies in Vermont and to take a long view of what Vermont's dairy industry would need if there's continued growth in the goat industry. We hear from farmers that more research is definitely needed on the herd health and veterinary and nutrition and reproduction side, genetics, and then even in the kind of research that we're doing, when we go to look at other studies, we find it's just not there on profitability and um, cost of production. These aren't boom times for Vermont's dairy farmers, and goat dairies are subject to the same market forces like inflation and the volatile cost of inputs that have been affecting cattle dairies for decades. Despite these circumstances, the refrain we heard over and over again on this tour was, goats aren't cows. When we started with the goats, we kind of thought of them as small cows. It took me many years to change my thinking about that. There are many similarities, but there are some very important distinctions that if you just say, it, like when we're talking numbers, 
everything for a Holstein divided by 10, you know, there you have it for a goat, whether it's grain rations, the volume of manure, volume of milk, so forth, it can be fraught thinking. And it's worth, it's worth Deborah really Lee long. Adams runs Grand Deborah yeah. Farms in Castleton. She's been a longtime advocate of goat's milk products and has experienced the difference between milking cows and milking goats firsthand. Started with cows and I wouldn't go back to cows. I'll stick with my goats. <laughs> goats are a lot cleaner than cows. Um, the manure is different. Um, they're just easier to take care of. You don't need as big of a space as you do for cows. Adams is also familiar with the challenges of learning to take care of goats through trial and error. I think we've done everything wrong <laughs> before we figured out things that were right. Little by little you learn, you learn what works, and our basic philosophy is to keep it simple. I've done a couple of these farm tours to see what I can do for the future, improve our farm, what other things we can change. Brooklyn Courier is the assistant dairy manager at Blue Ledge Farm in Leicester. She echoed the importance of visiting other goat dairies to see how they operate. You can't just go drive down the road and see a goat dairy, it's pretty rare. It would be nice to have people come around and expand this. We could maybe get more research into this. Goat dairy farmers are connecting with each other because there's not as much research there. You know, they're calling each other, troubleshooting. Um, and one thing we heard was we would love to see other goat dairies. We'd love to have more of that connection. Or I think it's really important for goat dairies who are starting up to see as many operations as they can look at parlor setups, look at housing setups. Um, and so that was, that was partly my hope for these tours is that goat dairy farmers would be talking to each other. Making connections and maximizing efficiencies were the two takeaway messages from this tour. We do the best when we just stick to what we're good at. While we like, you know, crops and haying and so forth, where we make our money is in the milking parlor. So optimizing genetics, herd comfort and herd health. Those are the biggest levers for profitability that we could pull. We need to be making more milk. I don't know if we necessarily need to be milking more animals, but you know, the animals that you have need to be special and need to be productive and need to be healthy is basically, is basically the bottom line, yeah. And I think, don't underestimate the health of your animal. I know like when you're first starting out, like there's certain compromises you need to make and certain things you just like have to accept because you're trying to get started, but Sourcing good animals is like really, I think, important. If the enthusiasm from the participants in this tour is any indication, then this won't be the last time farmers or Vermonters hear about goat dairies in Vermont. In Randolph, I'm Keith Silva with Across the Fence. And joining me to talk about UVM's research into Vermont's growing goat industry is the director of UVM Extension and one of the leads on this project, Roy Beckford. Welcome, Roy. It's great to have you here. Thank you, Fran. It's great to see you. Great to see you in person. Yeah, right. <laughs> this, is, this is wonderful. Yeah. Um, so the findings on this research have, have recently been compiled. Yes. What did you learn? We learned a lot. We learned, for example, that um, there are increasingly more and more people interested in uh, goat dairying in the state of Vermont. We learned that there is more work that needs to be done <laughs> on research um, on milk and, mi mm, and protein sure. um, from, from, uh, from goat milk. Um, but all of that is exciting and it gives us impetus to actually get more involved in this kind of work. Um, we learned a whole deal about who might be interested, mm. um, um, you know, what the land space is, what the requirements are, what the transitional constraints potentially from uh, cow dairy to goat dairy might be. We, we learned a ton. Um, we had over, you know, 40 pages of, uh, of, 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 of documentation that we put down for the grand tour. So, so a little bit about that transitioning from mm -hmm. uh, cows to goats. Um, you know, cows are not goats. Uh, what are some of the challenges that farmers face when, um, if they stop milking cows and uh, decide to uh, have a goat dairy? And you said, you said a part of it, cows are not goats, or goats are not cows. <laughs> goats are not little cows. Right. <laughs> They're completely different individual when it comes to raising them. Um, and your challenge is that's, that's different. I mean, one of the things I, I always start off with, and I've, I've worked in many places, yeah. and I always um, tell people, goats actually have two um, teats on their udders 
cows are four. <laughs> and so you've got to have to actually put that demand. People are shocked. Well, like, oh my God, this is <laughs> le uh, less here. Um, uh, goats are really excellent milkers, um, especially if you have the right breeds. Mm. Um, and just like in, 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 in cattle dairying, you have to select the right breeds of goats in order to get the maximum amount of uh, product from your, from your animals. Right. Those are some of the things that you have to contemplate before you actually make any kind of transition. And they have more kids. Oh, yes. Right? That's, that's, that's <laughs> the important thing. Excellent yeah. point. Yeah. Two on average, but sometimes four. Goats are very prolific um, and they can have probably in many cases up to two kiddings per year right. if you time it right. Two to six. So, oh right, and two kiddings. Wow. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> so this research I want to get to focused mm -hmm. on dairies and milk, which is very important of course right. to this state, right. um, which is still an, a niche market. Uh, yeah. But there, you think there are bigger markets even in goat meat, which is popular all around the world, but not right. so much in the United States as, as, as well as fiber. Exactly. So I've worked in many devel developing countries as um, I may have talked to you, you know, mm -hmm. one on one in the past of working the, in places like Jamaica, mm -hmm. the British Virgin Islands, and I've done stints in parts of Africa, India, and so on, and Latin America, where there is um, generally more interest in goat meat. Um, it's always been a part of their diet there. Mm -hmm. Less so in the United States, which is plain catch up in terms of meat consumption and also goat milk consumption. Sure. Um, but in all these parts of the world, People raise goats, people uh, understand uh, how to do it. They understand how to prepare it properly. Um, they, have, they have multiple types of um, meals and dishes right. to prepare from goat meat. Very nutritious. Absolutely, yeah. we need to catch up. By the way, the American um, Heart Association recommends goat me uh, meat because it's lower in cholesterol than beef and chicken. Fantastic. And of course, there's cashmere and mohair, and these are very different types. So this is a very interesting opportunity. Absolutely. It, it, it is. Um, and I know it's going to take some time to catch up yeah. um, fully in, in the state of Vermont um, because we're so accustomed to you know, the, the particular way of life that we're used to. But I think that people are getting involved, as um, is, was portrayed in the video here. Yeah. Um, and uh, increasingly, people will get more involved in this. Roy, we're out of time. Thank you so much. Very exciting. Thanks. Thank you. And thank you for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Stay well.